And what's going on? Fontaine here, back on Machine 2.6.2. And what I'm going to cover today is just doing some real-time pitch shifting inside Machine 2.6.2. I uh, was just doing a video. Uh, a member asked me to do a video on host automation in Machine. So while I had the video running, I figured I might as well go ahead and answer this question too. Uh, basically, it's in regards to they were saying they want to know how to do the real-time uh, pitching, or rather the real-time pitch shifting inside Machine 2.6. Point two, which currently is, is a limitation. Uh, machine man, it just can't do that yet. Um, at this particular moment in time when I'm making this video for the machine 2.6.2 video. However, there are new updates that are coming out and I'm sure that Native Instruments will cover this. Now, the 2.6.5 is about to come out where we're going to be able to go to our group patterns and we can uh, audition uh, patterns on the fly. And it has a, a different view also where you can... Uh, uh, drop your scenes in this uh, I can't remember the exact name of it right now to my mind in a million places at once but it's basically how it is on your pattern arranger uh, in a sense I don't mean it's gonna be a pattern arranger up here don't get me wrong but what I'm saying is you can drop your your scenes in, in, in a certain view with certain patterns so if you're not a member of www.vipsoundlab.com make sure that you're a member because when we do the, the 2.6.5 videos we're going to cover you know every detail and every aspect of that so i think that's going to be a pretty a pretty nice addition but anyway to answer the question for the real time pitch shifting for anyone who doesn't understand time stretching and pitch shifting what you have to understand they're two completely different things okay time stretching is basically the process of changing the speed or duration of an audio signal without affecting its pitch Okay, and that's time stretching. Pitch shifting or pitch scaling is the opposite. It's the process of changing the pitch without affecting the speed. Keyword affecting the speed. Okay, similar methods can change speed, pitch, you know, or both at once in a time varying way. So these processes are basically used, for instance, to match the pitches and tempos. You know, for example, and contact five what we're going to do is we're going to do some real-time pitch shifting in there but for this example i have a a sample that i have have pre-made here and you can see right here here's a sample okay what happens is you know i'm gonna basically get us caught up to uh to where this guy is at and what he's wanted to do okay so here's a sample All right, so this is the sample I'm gonna use for this video. Okay, so now basically I'm getting you caught up to where the member is and what he's asking me. Okay, so let's say for example, we have many videos, tutorial videos on time stretching inside machine. But just to give you um, a perfect example, you have a time stretch icon here. Okay, here's your source beats per minute, 80.3, meaning that this sample is 80.3. And I'm gonna to try to keep this video as brief as possible and quick to the point, because I know you guys got things to do and it's very easy this workaround i'm going to show you how you can actually make it work inside a machine here's the new source beats per minute what happens is you can apply that uh that time stretch to actually slow the sample down because from 80.3 to 79 it won't be a drastic a drastic effect but depending on what your your new beats per minute is it's, you know how dramatic it's going to sound to you right there length four bars okay all that's cool and all that's dandy but okay when it comes to doing it you know you want to do it in real time the problem is the speed, which is why contact popped in my mind. I was like, I don't understand why they could do in a contact and not a machine. I, you know, me personally, I was just like, hey, grab that part of the script out of contact five and incorporate it into machine. Problem solved. The technology is already here. You guys already have it done. Why are you not putting it in the machine? But, you know, I'm not in a, you know, affiliated with native instruments in any way. I mean, if they came to me and asked me to beta test some equipment or anything like that, hey, I, I would love to do it. You know, but the, the problem is going to be, okay, for the member, okay, let me put this like this just so it makes a, a great example. Okay, here is a four-bar loop like this right here, okay? First bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. When you pitch shift, let's say if you go up some octaves and a sample speeds up, okay, where in its entirety it would play out to the fourth bar here, would probably end somewhere around here three or four 
you know, somewhere up in here. And that's something that you don't want. When you're pitch shifting your samples, you want it to play out in its entirety through the total duration of the loop. Okay. This right here is the loop. Okay. You don't want your sample to be playing and then boom, stop right here. No, you want to keep the entirety of the sample playing like this at a different pitch. The speed, the speed will change a little bit. Well, nah, I can't even, I can't even really say the speed's going to change. The speed's not going to really change. It's just the pitch. You know, it's not, you don't want to affect the speed. The only thing we want to affect here is the pitch. And that is the key. All right. So machine 2.6.2, how do you do that? Okay. Well, look, we have contact here. Here's my sinister drums. Now I've been saying this about contact for a while. Contact five is an, an amazing expansion. And I've been making a lot of uh, rather scripting, a lot of expansions for this because I know the potential of contact. I know what you can and what you can't do in it. And I, I've made slice and chop, uh, you know, modules for this for a while now, since I've been getting into scripting, you know, I have the crate diggers. I have, um, boom bap city two. Now I have, I have various slicing and chopping, um, products that you guys can head over to www.vip sound lab and get right now and if you understand contact and where i was going with it you would understand that you have certain things inside contact that most people just in the dawn let me have like yo maybe a lot of people actually sleeping on what contact can do okay for example here's a zone map inside contact works the same as, as machine right and i hope to god that people who have been buying these expansions from me when it comes to my slicing time understands this and have been using this because you haven't been using this you're not using the expansions to the full potential okay for example let's say i time stress the sample in machine okay that's half the work done right and it, it bounced to the desktop let's say this is the sample right here we were done with it we time stretch it how we want to time stretch it we have the bars basically you're time stressing it to get you know a certain amount of bars whatever it is you want but you know Unfortunately, machine can't do that magic yet, but hey, but contact five can. So why not take advantage? And what I'm doing right here is I'm setting a zone range from, you know, high to low, just giving me something decent to work with. You know, OK, so you close your map editor out. Now, look, here's your source. You have the default. Uh, uh, right, right. It's default from disk, I believe it is the DFD. And here's your MIDI. You know, you want to set to Omni, depending on you know your MIDI controller. You have, you know, different ports you know, in, in your MIDI channels and things of that nature here, you know, I'm on MIDI channel one. All right. So when you click on, on this little icon here in your source, instead of using your default from this, you have time machine, time machine two pro beat machine, 1260. <clears throat> Why not just use time machine pro? All right. So this is a script that native instruments has inside here. So, you know, I think it would be intuitive to maybe grab that script and put it inside contact. I mean, put it inside a machine, you know, they might have to, you know, rewrite this or rewrite that or rewrite that to, to, to make it work correctly. But I think it works good inside of contact. So why not have it do the same thing inside a machine? All right. So basically that's it. That that's the workaround. It's inside contact five using contact five as a sound module and the sustain. I'm going to turn the sustain all the way up. Why? Because when it plays the sample out in, in its entirety, you don't want the sample audio dipping and fading out towards the, the end of the sample. In other words, when it's playing like this, if it's at this particular fixed volume, you want to have a fixed volume all the way through the sample. You don't want the sample to play at one volume. And then when it gets around to the third bar, start getting quiet or quiet or quiet until around the fourth bar, you can't even hear it anymore. So no, that's not something that you want to do. You want to have the velocity fixed all the way through. So, that's where the sustain comes in. And, you know, in a lot of my experience, I always put attack decay sustain and release for these specific reasons. You know, if you're using it right, you'll understand why most people look at these and say, this isn't nothing, you know, sample start and you know, attack decay sustain and release is very important in your music. It is very, very key. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you that it's very, very key. The release icon is so when you let go. In other words, the keys here are now like pads on machine and we let go of the key now it will release the sample you know kind of fade i'll give it like a nice gradual fade off okay so now i'm going to use one of 
example, I'm going to touch a lower octave. And what I want you to do is listen to the timing on it. Notice how now it's going to play the sample out from beginning to end. It's going to be the same time. If you ran a stopwatch or if you ran a loop bar, if I, you know, if I put a MIDI note here inside of um, a machine and looped it, you will see that it will perfectly loop at no matter what point in time um, that it, it's, it's doing it. So it was like 80 points something. I just can't remember. I think I think it said 80, 80.3. All right. I got what I was looking at. My bad. My number lock key wasn't on. Okay. 80.3. I believe that's what it was. All right. So if I go over here and let me get this uh, previous session off. Gonna make a perfect loop there. We're gonna go to the piano roll. Now, I'm not sure if that's gonna you know loop perfect because my memory, I'm going by my memory, I believe it was 80.3. Um, in the sample, I'm being lazy. I should I should just go over here and look 80.3. Okay. So now you'll notice that it's gonna perfectly loop the sample in its entirety for those four bars. So let's say, for example, I press play here. All right, now that example right there uh, is pitched up very, very high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this down. But it's just to give you an idea. You you seen how that was pitched up very, very high, but it didn't slow down, didn't drop out. It played the entire of the sample. Why? Because the sustain icons here, and it perfectly looped. Now I'm slowing it down here. So now it's not gonna play so slow where when it gets towards the end, you're only gonna hear about you know, one third of the sample before it loops and it's going to be off. No, this is going to be still be perfectly on time because contact five has the real time pitch shifting thanks to Time Machine Pro. See how that loop perfect. So the reality of the matter is the sample is probably somewhere like over in here or something like that. You see what I'm saying? And I hope you guys are using the expansions like this, man, because that's what I'm making them for. That's why I got into scripting for Contact 5. So let's say, for example, I'm on the my MIDI controller. You can make like them RZA type beats, you know what I'm saying? Check it out. saying you get like I'm saying and then you got contact right here I mean so you can get in there you know 
and get your and get your drums done real dope, man. So, man, that's one workaround. I hope that helps you out, man, because that makes perfectly good sense, you know, for this particular limitation inside a machine. I think this is a perfect workaround. You know, your rat inside the box with machine anyway, using contact five. So this is your boy Fontaine, VIP I will see you guys on 2.6.5.